Bishop Henry, in your recent pastoral letter to the Calgary Herald, you wrote that the people and the priests feel battered and scattered by the relentless media campaign on child abuse in the Catholic Church. Are you on the defensive? Yes and no. Um, basically, I'm not really defensive because I think on the one hand, certainly we need purification of the church and we need transparency. The truth has to be told. And as painful as it is, uh, we're not really going to uh, correct things until we face the truth. And every time there is an allegation or uh, something that is reported in the media, it's like once again, we tell the whole story, not just as one individual instance, but we keep regurgitating the past. Now, maybe it's necessary to do that, but as a disciple and one who loves the church and who loves people, this hurts because I don't think that we are always getting a sympathetic hearing in the media, but I can't focus on that because there's no way I can possibly get all of the truth out in the way in which I want it uh, to be proclaimed. But I think the message sometimes we get in the media is a little bit mixed. I think sometimes it's unfair. You do have some history with this, Bishop. You did hire a convicted sex offending priest to work in a Calgary parish without telling the parishioners. What were you thinking when you hired Father James Neal? I'm thinking I'm trying to save a human being who on the recommendation of his bishop, who had paid his debt to society, who had gone through South Down psychological testing. I did all of my due diligence. I put in place a mentoring system. The pastor, the parish council was informed. I didn't inform the whole parish. That was my fundamental mistake. If I were to do it all over again, I would have him now and myself go before that pastoral assignment, go to the parish and say, okay, this is this man's story. Listen to him talk. You make the judgment as to whether or not you want to trust him as your priest. Without doing that today, I would say no way. Zero tolerance. Would never give a priest an assignment. Uh, no matter how good a story may be, no matter how therapeutic uh, the report and complete it may be, I just can't do it today. You sound regretful. Yeah, I am, because I think it, it caused everybody hurt that was unnecessary. Tell me what you are learning, what lies at the root when a priest is broken in that sexual way. Well, from a priest's vantage point, I mean, it's, it's of course a total betrayal of everything that he's supposed to stand for. I don't know that anybody fully understands the mindset of, of, a, of a pedophile or an ephebophile. I think you should remind us about the priestly code of conduct that the church is very careful that people adhere to. Could you? Well, I can give you 12 pages of it. I probably <laughs> would be. I mean, it, oh, it's very, uh, it, and some of it is very common sense. It has to do with how you counsel when you see people. What are the proper boundaries? What's acceptable? What's unacceptable? Any other practical steps for building us together in healing in a new future? I would say the one thing I would probably caution people against is, is forming stereotypes. And I think we're all capable of drawing the wrong conclusions. I would say find out for yourself. Make an act of faith, make an act of trust. The church is not an institution. The church is the body of believers. This is the body of Christ. Is it always pure? No, sometimes it's sinful, sometimes it's messy. But we always have to remember that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. And I think we're trying pretty hard to be saints. Bishop Fred Henry in Calgary, thank you very much.